afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to day three of the Guest Artist Recital Series. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, this is our chance to offer as many um, solo and chamber recital spots to as many people who want to perform at ATW. We don't have enough time for everyone to give a recital that wants one, so this is our chance to, you know, spread the love a little bit. Uh, I want to remind everyone that uh, tonight's concert, uh, if you're coming in, coming back in on bass, after going off bass, leave a lot of time. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to get back on bass. Sometimes it's not. You never know. Uh, a special welcome to everybody who is watching online. Uh, thanks for joining us. And for you guys, the final concert tonight will be on Facebook, not on the YouTube channel. OK. so. First up today, we have a duet and a couple world premieres. Uh, they're going to talk a little bit about it more than I know right now. So please help me welcome from Ball State University, Chris Van Hoff and the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra, Evan Conroy. Thank you, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Chris. And uh, we are the artists formerly known as the Cross Current Duo. We, like any good band, we've changed our name. So now we're called Make More Noise. Uh, and this, what you're witnessing right now is the beginning of what we intend to be a long project of commissioning new works for tenor and bass duo um, and mixed accompaniment. So today we have two with electronic accompaniment. Um, at the ITF coming up this summer, we'll have one uh, by a really wonderful Colombian composer, Carolina Calvace, with some hand percussion. And uh, another one that's the accompaniment is made from a DIY make make it your own in your basement synthesizer that a friend of ours built. So that one's going to be pretty cool. Um, we have a very special uh, first piece here in that it was composed by a, for, a former student of mine at Colorado State where I used to teach. Uh, he was a fine trombone major for me and a composition major there as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's here in the audience, Mr. Eric Lagergren. He's going to come up and introduce his piece. Hi, so <clears throat> I'm a trombonist and a composer, so brace yourself for a lot of awkwardness. Um, <laughs> so this piece is called Reminiscent Ruminations. Yeah, I said that right. Um, I composed it a while back when Van Hoff originally came to me with this idea of like, hey, I'm getting a duo together. Compose me something. It was like, awesome. So this piece um, kind of looks at memory and stuff like that. It has like four distinct sections that I wrote into it. The first one kind of showcases like the main idea of the entire piece, just like a really simple motif that you're going to hear a lot. Then the second section, it goes into uh, kind of like the faultiness of memory and stuff like that. Um, the, it starts off with like a really simple motif and slowly throughout the whole section, it kind of loses its sense of identity and stuff like that. Um, the next section kind of uh, pulls from minimalism and it just kind of it builds a bunch of uh, it builds on itself with that one same simple motif from the very beginning before finally after you've kind of had enough of hearing that one simple motif the performers kind of forget how to play it and it kind of like focuses on memory loss and stuff like that um, so that's the piece in a nutshell <laughs> hopefully you enjoy it
Thank you. 
All right. How about one more time for Eric Lagergren, composer here. Bravo. The trombone players in the house might know that he studies with another fine trombonist composer at Colorado State, Jim David. Uh, he wrote this great piece for Joe Alessi to play with Columbus State called Garden of the Gods. He's, he uh, has, has a brand new bass trombone sonata that's being played. So Eric comes from very good composer stock, at least. I can't speak to the trombone side of things. So. Uh, we have one other piece today, and uh, this piece in particular, if you didn't notice that the piece from Eric was very uh, kind of uh, cinematic and almost pop music style, that's a, that's a big goal of ours, is to find um, an intersection of art music with um, uh, kind of commercial and popular styles. So this next piece is by uh, a young composer named Tom Shipper. He's Dutch, and he's studying film composing right now. You might know a piece of his... Uh, and, and I apologize, the name escapes me, but it won the um, jury prize at uh, a recent Slide Factory event in the Netherlands. A really cool trombone choir piece. This piece he calls Hang the Code, which is inspired by a, co a quote from Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, which I can only assume means there's going to be like eight more of these. And they're all, hopefully we'll, Johnny Depp will be involved at some point. Um, we have really enjoyed working on this piece. We were. Uh, this is a piece that we led a commission consortium with. Uh, you'll be hearing it a lot more. And um, what Tom has done here is uh, he has this kind of cool little motive at the beginning, and then you'll hear an unabashed pop song come in, which is really fun to play. Uh, really funky, kind of a uh, 80s synth pop thing. And uh, a little bit of interlude, some, some uh, improvising involved for us, and then uh, the pop song basically falls apart. Uh, it, gets, it gets pulled at the seams until it's uh, almost unrecognizable. It's definitely not toe-tapping, hence the headphones for us. So um, we hope you enjoy another world premiere here. This is Tom Shipper's Hang the Code.
And now for something completely different. Uh, we're going to hear uh, the prelude from suite number two by Mike Silover. Thank uh -huh. 
So in addition to our um, tenor, bass, and jazz solo competitions that we have here at ATW, we also have a composition competition. And this year, the winner is Howard Boos. And he has written us. He unfortunately could not be here today. He was watching online. Hi, Howard. Um, so he has written a piece this year called The Three Sack Butters Enter Valhalla. And I'm going to read the thing that, has, that he's put in here. The Three Sack Butters Enter Valhalla is a fantasy piece in which the composer imagines the entrance of three sack butt players into the enormous hall of Valhalla. An improbable collage of spacious ideas and historical anachronisms combine in a dreamlike manner and are embedded in the musical tapestry of this work. For one thing, sack butts did not exist in the time of the Vikings. In addition, this composition is not scored for actual sack butts. Uh, rather, it uses their modern-day ancestors' trombones. It begins and ends with a Viking war cry. While the Vikings did use a similar chant, the one used in this fantasy is based on the stirring Icelandic thunderclap war chant that involves a drumbeat alternating with a simultaneous hand clap and vocal vocalization of the syllable, huh. accelerating and culminating in a frenzy of excitement. The sophisticated musical language of the three sack butters into Valhalla combines with the programmatic fantasy implications and audience participation to create a rousing concert feature. For trios doing outreach concerts in the schools, it affords the opportunity to discuss the history of the trombone in a way that is fun and sure to engage the students. So the, this is originally scored for three trombones, and I'm told that the group is do, taking a little bit more liberty with it. So Howard, I hope you're OK with that. <laughs> so. Performing this piece are three, well, four members from the United States Army Band, and we're calling them a trio of bones from Pershing Zone. <laughs> that was Howard's idea, not mine. <laughs> uh, the, the three trombonists are staff sergeants in the Army Band, the three most recent trombone hires in the ceremonial band, and they are Staff Sergeant Omar De Jesus, Staff Sergeant Hank Curry, Staff Sergeant Katie Thickpen, and they are assisted on percussion by Sergeant First Class Brad Leisure.
Once, once again, once again, congratulations to Howard Buss for being the composition competition winner for 2018. Next up, we have an addition to the program. Uh, this was sort of a last minute thought um, that was conceived, um, I, I think, over a beer. I don't, I don't really know, um, but. We have the, the great fortune to have the uh, principal trombonist of the National Symphony Orchestra coming to join us today. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about this piece coming up. So please help me welcome to the stage uh, uh, principal trombonist of the NSO, Craig Mulcahy, and his pianist, Sophia Kim Cook. Before I begin, I'd like to thank uh, Kristen Griega for uh, sponsoring the commission of this, and uh, and also Frank Galina for writing a fantastic piece. It's really pretty. It's a nice. Uh, it's a new piece for alto. There aren't a lot of new pieces for alto, and I hope more will come. This is a nice. Uh, it's a beautiful piece to get into it, and also thank you for Edward for making this this all this possible.
Well, thank you all for coming. We have one more piece for you guys today. Uh, we decided that we should end the guest artist recitals with some uh, guests from within the band. Oh. Um, but anyway, so the four of us that are about to play for you uh, are the four newest ceremonial trombones in uh, this unit. Uh, and we decided we wanted to play a quartet and have some fun. And that it wasn't just standing outside in the cold. Um, and we decided, well, we did not decide. Someone decided that we were going to be called the slide sergeants. So it was, it was his wife, that, his, uh, her idea. So blame him. <laughs> we're going to play a piece. It's a little, a little unknown, not super known. Um, it's called The Town Musicians of Bremen. Die, well, in German, Die Bremer Staten Musikaten. Um, and it's a, a Brothers Grimm fairy tale. Um, and it's about some four, four uh, domesticated animals who are nearing the end of their life, and they're looking for the next step, which is not an, an end of their life. So you're going to hear each one of us as a different animal. Um, there won't be any audience participation. <laughs> That's not one of the animals. And we're going to be assisted uh, once again by Sergeant First Class Brad Leisure as our narrator. A donkey, who had labored on the farm for many years, was growing too old and tired to keep working. Afraid what his master was planning to do with him, he ran away and set out for Bremen, where he thought he could come be become a town musician. After a while, he encountered a hound dog on the side of the road, howling. Why are you singing the blues? asked the donkey. Because I'm too old and weak to hunt, replied the dog, and my master wanted to kill me, so I fled. But how am I supposed to earn a living now? You know what, said the donkey? I'm going to Bremen to become a town musician, and you can come with me and join the town band. I'll play the lute, and you the drums. The dog agreed, and they continued on their way. Soon after, they saw a cat beside the road making a long and sorry face. Why the sad face, old whiskers? asked the donkey. My mistress wanted to drown me because I'm too old to catch mice, said the cat. I managed to escape, but now I don't know what to do or where to go. Why don't you come along with us to Bremen? You know a thing or two about night music, so you can become a town musician, too. The cat thought that was a good idea and went along. The three fugitives passed a barnyard where a rooster was perched on the gate, crowing with all his might. Your crowing gives me the chills, said the donkey. Why are you screaming like this? Because the lady of the house has ordered the cook to chop off my head this evening, answered the rooster. <laughs> Company is coming tomorrow, and they want to put me in the soup pot. I'm just crowing at the top of my lungs while I still can. Come along with us to Bremen, said the donkey. The life of a town musician is certainly better than death. Besides, you have a good voice, and when we make music together, it will sound magnificent. 
The rooster liked the suggestion, and the four went on together toward Bremen. After traveling some time, they came to a forest where they decided to spend the night. The donkey and the dog lay down under a large tree, the cat climbed up onto a branch, and the rooster flew to the top of the tree, where he could see far and wide. At nightfall, he noticed the light of a house in the distance and said to his companions, I see a house. Let's go over there, said the donkey. Perhaps we can find better accommodations. So, with renewed optimism, the four animals made their way toward the house in the woods. As they got closer, the donkey, being the tallest, peered through the window through the, into the well-lit room. What do you see, my great steed? asked the rooster. I see men eating, drinking, and enjoying themselves. There's lots of food and piles of loot. Why? I think it's a house of robbers. A den of thieves! <laughs> The table is covered with wonderful food, said, wailed the donkey. Do you see any prime rib, asked the dog. Climb up on my back and see, said the donkey. The dog jumped on the donkey's back and peered into the window. I'll climb up too, said the cat, as she scooted up onto the dog's shoulder. Ooh, there's seafood and a big loaf of bread, crowed the rooster who had flown up and perched up to make a four-tiered animal pyramid. The four aspiring musicians, shrouded in darkness, stared hungrily through the window at the table piled high with food as the reveling criminal inhabitants ate, drank, rolled dice, arm wrestled, and partied into the night, unaware of the bizarre fate that was about to befall them. plunged through the window, sending broken glass everywhere. The robbers, who thought they had been invaded by witches, ghosts, and evil spirits, fled in terror out of the house and vanished into the relative safety of the surrounding woods. As the dust settled, the four minstrels, satisfied with their debut, sat at the table and enjoyed their feast, each one finding some food to each of her own liking. were tired from their journey, and after eating their fill, they soon fell asleep. Meanwhile, the robbers wondered what could have possibly scared them so and driven them out of the house. After midnight, the chief robber sent one of his henchmen back to check it out. He found everything quiet and went into the kitchen to, check, to light a candle. Mistaking the cat's eyes for glowing hot coals, he held up a match to them, but the cat lunged into the robber's face, hissing and scratching. <laughs> This frightened the robber so that he ran out the back door, waking up the sleeping dog who bit him in the leg. As he ran across the yard, the donkey gave him a solid kick with his hind legs, and the rooster, awakened by the commotion, began crowing loudly. The robber 
ran back fast to lead her as fast as he possibly could. There's a gruesome witch in the house. She spat on me and scratched my face with her long claws. At the door is a man with a knife, and he stabbed my leg. In the yard, a huge monster beat me with a wooden club. And on top of the roof, the judge was sitting and screaming, Bring me the rascal! I got out of there as fast as I could. The robbers, convinced that their evil ways had finally caught up with them, left the house and never came back. So the four town musicians of Bremen liked the place so much that they stayed there, making their own special music together for a long, long time. Thank you all very much for coming. We hope you enjoyed the guest artist recital series. In about a half hour, I believe Matt Neese is giving a recital in here, and you should all be there for it. Thank you.